continuing here, <clears throat> excuse me, to sum it up, ladies, you are more powerful. And the reason is because you have greater self-control and there are natural laws involved. There's good reason why you have greater self-control than men because you have a greater responsibility. You are the ones that bear the children. Okay, so you are the reason that human existence continues to carry on, okay? And, uh, and that, is, that is a very powerful role in this whole thing. I mean, who, who can deny that? It is the most powerful role. So men really are, by natural law, subservient to the female. And, uh, and this is why men, you know, the first chapter in the Bible, I mean, when God's, you know, it's not good that man will be, is alone. Uh, I'll create a helper suitable for him. And the beloved, I mean, God himself is, is not an island unto himself. I mean, he created the female side of him and gave her more power than the male side. I mean, and this is indicative, emblematic, and it is revealing in the human condition too, being that we're made in his image and likeness. I mean, it's just the way it is that men are, you know, it's, it's not your better half, guys. It is more than that. I mean, it, it, it's huge. Uh, that's the why it explains why so many women can be seemingly at least content to be alone, to be single, but men cannot. We're, we're really not okay. We're really not right. We're, we can't be a being single. We, we have to at least admit that we yearn to have a beloved. You've got to be seeking that beloved, okay? And we, you just can't, you can't sit on your laurels because this has everything to do with values. You understand? So when you discover, like I have, I mean, a long time ago, too, I knew I wanted a wife, like I said, since childhood. And then when I was in my early 20s, I was done fooling around. I wanted to be married. And I, I would not consummate the relationship with, at that time, my girlfriend, my, my steady, uh, until she agreed to marry me. I wanted her to commit herself to me. I wanted to be committed to someone. And it's, it's just grown on me all these decades later. It's been reinforced over and over, and it's built up, and it built up, and it's just, Wow. I get it, man. I'm never going to be self-satisfied. I'm never going to be okay alone. Furthermore, I do not want to be self-satisfied. Furthermore, I do not want to be okay alone. Okay, I need. I crave. I want my that thing I value more than anything. It's I want. To, I tend to want to say life itself. But then, you know, if I didn't have life, I couldn't appreciate a beloved. But I certainly know I value it more than. Not only anything in the world, including multi-trillions of whatever amount of money you can think of, or and including everything in the world. I would rather have just a beloved. Okay, that's it. That's all I want more than anything else in the whole world. I know my values, and I'm at least conveying that to the whole world. I'm telling you guys, this is it, man. It does not get better than finding a beloved. Okay, that's it. So cherish her. If you're so lucky as to have one, just thank God day in and day out. You know what I mean? It, listen, you pray in private and it's going to come out. You're going to just reveal to her how precious, how valuable she is. Okay, how much she is cherished. You're going to, it's going to come out. You, you just acknowledge it to God. Say, God, thank you so much for this woman. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. I am going to make this the happiest woman in the whole world. I'm going to make her love me so much. I'm going to be so freaking nice to her. I'm going to hold her in my loving arms. She's going to feel so good. She's going to feel so secure. She's going to feel so safe. She's going to feel so protected. She's going to feel so many warm and fuzzies. And she's going to give it all back to me. And it's going to be the most beautiful, godly thing in the whole world. The greatest gift God can ever give me is that woman. That's it. It does not get better than that, guys. Just remember that. Coming from the heart. All right, my friends. 
I'm going to get on to um, the current events we've had this last week. What we had happening here. <coughs> What's happening in the world, my friends? What's been happening? I've got talking points, recent current events, notes I've written down here I want to kind of share. I um, I had a, a pineapple I bought from the supermarket recently. I've, I've, how many pineapples I've eaten in my life? Probably a dozen, maybe. I mean, not that many. When you think about how many pineapples, I, I really enjoy the fruit. It's got a great flavor. But, of course, you know, they're a little tricky. But I just wanted to share this story because this has never happened to me before, ever, when I was eating pineapple. But it wasn't a large pineapple, and I was determined, well, I, you know, I could probably eat a little more than half of it, and uh, I should have stopped at that. But I ended up uh, eating the whole pineapple, and I burnt the crap out of my mouth, my tongue, my lips. I mean, it hurt for hours upon hours. And the next day, it took practically the next day before the sensation had gone away. I mean, it ate away all the that soft skin around my inside your mouth. It was sore. I mean, it was literally burning. My lips had even turned really, really red. It hurt, and I'd never experienced anything like that. And I just thought I would share that because uh, I'd never before looked it up, but I read it was, wow, a pineapple caused burning. And uh, sure enough, so... It's just a little warning there that, uh, yeah, it can happen. And uh, and if your lips tell you you've had enough pineapple, call it quits. You know, a slice or two maybe. But, uh, man, it, uh, I was hurting for a long time, let me tell you. And I just want to save you from that pain. So there was a video of this group of about 10 young thugs that beat the crap out of this woman in Stockton, California for no reason. And it sickens you. It just makes me ashamed to be a human when I see that. There was women involved in this thing, too. It was like, oh, my God. People, you know, I've heard these stories. People just want to kill somebody because they want to see what it's like. I mean, how satanic, how demonic is that? How, how shameful. I mean, you know, it makes you just recoil from being human. It's like, oh, my God, this is what the human nature is capable of? God Almighty, help us. This is funny. Also, it was in the news about Las Vegas and how they're facing this plague of locusts. <laughs> if, you, if anybody saw any of those images, it was like, holy crap, man. It's like something out of the Bible these poor Las Vegans are facing. You know, and I talk about this basic universal income as just one method of thwarting the evil-doing money masters of misery. And I mean it. I stand by that. Did you know Martin Luther King was a big proponent of this as a way to solve our social, political, and economic problems? Okay, so if you're opposed to a basic universal income, guess what? You're opposed to Martin Luther King Jr., you're an elitist, you're a hypocrite, and it's your fault. All the homicides that are committed because of a desperation for a few bucks, okay? Do you understand? It's your fault. The abortions, all the women that have abortions because they think they can't afford their babies, it's your fault. You understand? You have to at least share culpability if you're opposed to universal basic income, okay? As one way to thwart the evildoers. You know, you're not going to speak loud about, uh, speak out against uh, things like the bailout of 08, how criminal that was. You know what I mean? And then you're going to say this is okay, and, and I'm opposed to universal basic income because I don't believe in giving money away. you got to earn it by your merits and show how valuable you are to society. Yeah, well, which one of you, if you fell off the face of the earth today, okay, isn't going to be able to be replaced like that at the drop of a hat? Any one of us. And if you're under some stupid illusion about your great importance to humanity, try it. We've got the most educated people out there, right, that are, that are in positions of power, and things just keep going downhill. So who's going to stand up and say, oh, I'm so important, 
and the world can't live without me and my contribution to society is just so wonderful and great and I'm going to stand before God loud and proud and I'm going to say yeah the world really needed me when it's all a bunch of BS who the hell are you okay you're nobody any more than anybody else yeah, you're great. Yeah, you're the center of the universe. But you better be humble. You better understand that everybody else is great. And they are the center of the universe too. Other than that, we're all just drops in the same big fat bucket. Okay? So yes, I stand behind it. All those things, all the commuter traffic on the LA freeways, Bay Area freeways, it's your fault if you're opposed to universal basic income. That's right. You heard me say it. It's your fault, all these people going to these stupid jobs that revolve around the problem of, main, of desperate poverty, how important it is to maintain desperate poverty so people can keep committing crimes because of it. They're induced to committing crimes because of their destitution, their desperation for a few bucks. So all these people employ the lawyers and the judges and the court clerks and on and on and on, the jailers and all these good jobs. There are, without desperate poverty, these jobs would dry up. Do you understand? Do you understand how maddening this is to someone? You're enlightened and you see what's going on here, how stupid this is. This is absurd, man. So, oh, man, I stand by it every passing day. I'm more and more convinced that that is one very sound method, okay, of, of thwarting the evildoers that are running our lives, okay? That's it. There's many simple re uh, solutions. And everybody's got to admit that. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on, liberal, conservative, socialist, capitalist, Democrat, or Republican. At least admit there's plentiful, simple solutions. But there's people that don't want it. It's a conflict of interest. Do you understand? If you solve a problem and you look at, wow, what are the, what are the uh, ripple effects of solving that problem? You go, oh my God, the national debt would go away. Wait a minute, wait a minute. My bread and butter is that national debt. I've got to be able to lend money. I, this is how I, and if somebody says, hey, no, no, there's no more national debt. You're not poverty anymore. You don't need to borrow money, okay? And that national debt dries up. You understand it? All the jobs, the, the dubious warfare industry, the social welfare industrial complex, all these jobs that revolve around desperate poverty being maintained, what a threat it is to ever have desperate poverty dry up, and how stupid this is, how ungodly, how satanic, how evil it is, and you're not willing to do anything by any means necessary, thwart these evildoers that are creating our problems deliberately, intentionally. Okay, this is how they're tyrannizing us. This is how they're stealing the wealth that belongs to the people. It belongs to God, and by extension, it belongs to the people, we the people, all the people. We're all God's children. We all have an inherent, innate right to share in this planet's wealth. Okay, end of story. It's that simple. It's really that simple. So you're ungodly. If you oppose to a universal basic income or give some ideas, what are your ideas? Okay, sound economic policies, fine. In the meantime, understand, we're in a lot of trouble. It's a political problem, not a Democrat-Republican one, because they're all colluding. It's, a, it's not a socialist-capitalist uh, thing, because they're all colluding. These are just words. It's not a conservative-liberal thing, because they're all colluding. Do you understand? They're all what they call establishmentarians that support the establishment, whether it's just going with the flow, the path of least resistance, or indifference or complacency. That's the problem, and it's a big, fat juggernaut, and we need immediate help. We need triage, okay? We've got big problems, and if Donald Trump isn't willing to can the Federal Reserve, okay, get a payoff figure and get rid of them, because he's a big fat coward. Bark, bark. I mean, that's what Trump is. He's not doing anything substantive unless he gets rid of the, the Federal Reserve. I can't explain how all the establishmentarians were afraid of him at first because he was a wild card, but now he's just becoming status quo. He's going with the establishmentarian flow oh, tariffs and, oh, he's creating jobs and all this little peripheral marginal kind of stuff he's doing. Oh, he's going to stop the immigration, illegal immigration. Hey, everything's just gotten worse. 
We're paying higher prices for stuff because of the tariffs. Immigration is just the borders are virtually open since they heard that Trump was cracking down. Everybody in the world suddenly is moving to America, legal or not. They're just getting in, man. They say, oh, Trump's cracking down. Well, well, let's come flood the border. And especially, okay, Obama and Hillary, they created all the problems in Latin America. They destabilized it by appealing to corrupt leadership down there, corruptible getting them to sell out to the bankster class, tyrannize their people, and the people are leaving in droves because they got thugs and gangs taking over people's property, ter terrorizing them. And so, yeah, they're getting the hell out of Dodge. And then where are they coming to America? Where they say, well, these people caused the problem. Let's 